Hello, welcome to mini Photoshop lesson getting started. Our goal today is to learn how to put images into Photoshop, learn the Photoshop interface or screen, and then how to upload those photos back into Schoology. This is the directions for using it on the computer. The first thing you're going to need to do is get onto Schoology on your computer. I went to Chrome. You could go to Firefox, um, you could potentially use Safari, though sometimes it doesn't work, or Edge. Um, and then I'm going to go to, let me show you, if you haven't ever logged into Schoology on the computer, you go to isd623.org. And then you'd go to Students, Schoology. And from there, it would ask you to sign in. Then I just want you to go to Courses, Photography 1, Week 9, or wherever the lesson is, and go to your lesson that you need. After that, we want to make sure we download the image. So I'm going to click on this image. I don't want to just drag it to the desktop. So what's going to happen is it's going to become this tiny, tiny thing and you won't be able to edit it very well. And you'll get docked points and be forced to redo it. So don't just drag it. What I want you to do is actually click on it and make it bigger. And then hit download image. If it pops up on another screen, like another tab, just close that tab and come back to the one that looks like this and hit download. From there, you should open up Photoshop. Mine's already open. I encourage you to pause this video when you need to, to or replay it to, catch, um, to hear something previously or to catch up. The next thing we're going to do is go to open because we're opening a new image. Don't worry that you don't have these images over here. So I'll probably rename that photo that I downloaded for you guys to Photoshop practice. But for now, hit open. Then in your file explorer, you're going to have to find the downloads folder. And from there, you're going to find the picture with the leaves. Once you've gotten to this place, give yourself a pat on the back because you've basically done some of the hardest work already. The next step is pretty easy. We're just going to learn about the interface, edit this photo, and call it a day. So over here on the side on the left is your tools bar. These are all the tools that you can use in Photoshop, but also some that you may never actually use. There's so many tools here. And we're just going to learn a couple of them in this class. If you click on them, you'll notice that the top bar changes. This top bar is called your options bar. It gives you the options for every type of tool. Don't worry if your tools look different than mine. Because if you see the little arrow on the side, if you click and hold it, it gives you more options. And if you hover over it, it will tell you what the tool does. So that's the tools bar and the options bar. The last part about Photoshop that you need to know is just the panels. These are just different, mm, how do you describe panels? I won't worry about them too much. Basically, what you need to know is the adjustments panel here, the color panel, or you can kind of do swatches, and the layers panel. The layers panel is the most important part of Photoshop, and we'll get to that very shortly. But first, let's get over some anxiety here. You cannot break Photoshop. In fact, if you just start pulling panels off and closing them, oh no, I lost my layers panel. Miss Owen said that's really important. Here, do what I do, just pull apart Photoshop. Because eventually this is going to happen, 
and you're not going to know how to fix it. So here's how to fix if something is missing on your screen or isn't in the right spot. Go to Window, Workspace, Reset Essentials. So I'm just going to feel free to pause this in case you need it. So from here, the only thing that didn't get reset is the window. So I'm just going to grab that and drag it to the top until it goes a little bit transparent and blue. Bam, it's back in. So that's how to reset your workspace. The next thing we need to do is start editing our image. So I'm going to go to the Move tool. The Move tool is like your kind of basic, you can't mess up anything. It's like when you go to the Hand tool in Notability. That way you're not accidentally drawing or typing text anywhere. So the Move tool is kind of your neutral tool to use when you're not doing anything. From there, I'm going to go over to the right side of my screen and I'm going to grab from the Adjustments layer. In Adjustments, I want to first play around with one that you are very uh, probably know of already, and that is Brightness and Contrast. That's on every photo editing app ever. So it's this half black, half white moon right here. And we're just going to kind of see how there's no good values. There's no bright white. There's no dark black. Well, let's see if brightness and contrast can fix it. So let's go ahead and up both the brightness and the contrast. As you can see, it did bring back some of the white and some of the black, but now this weird purplish overtone is very much apparent. It didn't make the photo look better. And you can kind of see the before and after here. If I go to the layers, notice that it's created a new brightness and contrast filter layer on top of your picture. If you click the little eyeball next to the layer, you can kind of get a before and after. Basically, you hide the layer and then show the layer again. A little before and after to see how that works. Now, let's say you accidentally pressed brightness and contrast one too many times, and you really need to get rid of some of these. Oops. That's not what I wanted to do. All right, so I'm going to click on the layer and then click on the trash can at the bottom of the screen. It might ask me if I want to delete the layer. I'm going to say yeah. Or what you could do is you could drag the layer onto the trash can. So those are two different ways to do that. All right, so brightness and contrast, it's great only for black and white photos. That's why it doesn't work too well with colored photos, and your photos always look a little weird when you use it. So I'm going to teach you two other adjustments. It's curves and levels. So let's go ahead and start looking at one of the first ones. That one is going to be curves. So let's hide the brightness and contrast layer first. I don't want that showing. Then we're going to go up to the little box here that looks like an S curve on a graph in math. It's the top middle one. It's going to pop up this thing that looks like a bar graph. Basically, it's showing you that there's no very little black information right there above black, and there's no bright whites because there's no information above the bright whites. You don't have to worry about um, the graph too much. We're just going to worry about these eyedroppers here on the side. I'm going to grab the white one first. The white eyedropper is going to tell Photoshop where you have the where you want true white to be. So let's grab the brightest spot on this photograph, and I think that's this little area right here. So I'm going to click on that, and that's going to bring everything a lot brighter. It's going to raise up all the colors so that to meet that as true white. It's also going to start balancing out your colors. Now I'm going to, you can press in a couple different locations to figure out where it looks best. You don't want it too bright, but you want it bright enough that it really kind of helps pop out. 
see this one looks really good. You can tell that the wall is actually a cream color, not a purple. The colors are correct again. And it all it just looks great. Um, oh, out of curiosity, to zoom in and zooms out, it's Command plus to zoom in, or Control plus on a PC. Command minus, yep, here I am zooming in. Command minus to zoom out, or Control minus. To and then Control or Command zero right next to the plus and minus sign to make it fit to your screen again. All right. So one last try to find my perfect white balance here. And now I'm going to go up to the black eyedropper so I can tell Photoshop where I want the darkest part of the photo to be. So let's try that leaf, or we could try the rim here. Oh, the rim looks really good. All right, this doesn't look so good. That's not too bad. So you're really just trying, so I'm going to zoom in, Command plus or Control plus to the vase, and I'm going to try to find its darkest spot and make that the true black. Do, 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 do. So now I can do a kind of before and after with my curves using the little eyeball icon on the curves layer. So I can see, all right, is it better with brightness and contrast? Or does it look better with the curves? I think, hands down, curves is the way to go when you're editing a colored photo. But sometimes photographers combine two different adjustments, curves and what we call levels. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to curves. I'm hiding both of the other layers. So the other layers are both hidden. I'm going to go to curves. I'm going to grab this white eyedropper. I'm going to click on that true white spot that I liked. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the curves panel using this double arrow right here. Then I'm going to click on levels. So levels looks a little simpler. You can tell we have these little sliders that we can adjust. I'm going to adjust the black slider till it's right underneath black information and the white slider till it's right underneath some information. So basically you don't want them hanging out in empty space. You want them to be at the top and the bottom of this chart. And that kind of helps balance it out. And that's levels. So here we are. We can take a look at see which one of these we like most. Oh, if you ever want to go back and redo something, you just double click on this half white, half black circle right next to an adjustment layer and the adjustments pop up and you can continue to edit it. You don't have to add another adjustment layer or delete and redo it. All right, mess that up. Let's fix that again. Oops. All right, let's close that. And we're just going to take a look here after I stop playing around. There we go, closing that. Again, that was the double arrows at the top. Now I can use the eyeballs to see which of these I like better, just the curves by itself, the brightness and contrast, or the curves with the levels. So I'm going to end up deleting Curves 1 and Brightness and Contrast 1. I'm going to drag those down to the little trash icon at the bottom. There we go, dragged into the trash. And now we've completed this picture. Now the next thing that we're going to want to do is flatten the image. So. If we're editing this, we don't want to mess up the layers. So I'm going to right click or control click and I'm going on a layer and I'm going to go to flatten image. Another way you can do this is going to edit or sorry, layer at the top and then going all the way down to flatten image. So you can't see it, but I went to layer at the top and then down to flatten image. So now it's compressed my filters onto the background layer and I don't have to worry about messing them up anymore. 
So the next thing I want you to do is just kind of play around with this tool. This is the paintbrush. It's a lot of fun. You got different settings up here in the settings tab. You can change things in the colors. So I'm going to just change the color of my swatch. Another thing you can do, let's say you messed up, you can Command Z or Control Z to undo. So Command Z, Command Z, Command Z, or Control Z, Control Z, Control Z until that painting goes away. I don't want to see that when you turn it in. I was just liking to introduce a new tool to you. The next tool we're going to show you is the type tool. This is specifically the horizontal type tool, but it's your main type tool for text. If I click once, I start typing, but let's go ahead and go up to the top of the options bar and let's just set the font size to really high. I'm going to type in 100. Notice that on the when I, the drop down menu doesn't have 100, so I have to type it in. I'm going to pick a color. Nope, right here. Yep, up here at the top of the options bar, that's where you pick the color. And then you can pick the font. All right. Oop. So I just click once, start typing. It's going to highlight it. I'm just going to write hi. You can highlight that again to edit things like the font size and the color and the font choice. Remember the options bar is that top bar up there when you highlight it. Notice that in the layers, the new text layer gets named by what you type, which is kind of cool. So you always know where that text layer is if you need to delete it. So Photoshop works in layers. That's the most important part to really understand at this point is that it's just a bunch of layers. So from here, we're going to go to File, Save As. And hopefully you've set up your documents ahead of time. If you haven't, there's a video in Schoology on how to set up your documents so that you have good file organization, which is extremely important. So I set up my documents ahead of time. So I'm going to go to Documents, Photography 1. And I'm going to rename my project. Yep, so to set up your documents ahead of time, you're going to need to go into the File Explorer and create a folder. So yeah, Documents, Photography 1. I'm going to rename it, leaving the .psd. Never mess with the file extension. I'm going to name it PS Practice. Yeah, don't mess with this part. It's kind of important. Let it be. Let the computer mess with it. So right now, it's formatted as a Photoshop document, a .psd, and that's great if you're going to continue to work on it. It saves all the layers. It allows you to continue to edit it. It's perfect, but it's not great for web. Schoology doesn't recognize a Photoshop document, so when you turn it in, it may not work. Also, even if it does work, I won't be able to see the document. So let's scroll down here, and let's change our format to something that's ready for web-based application. So we're going to go from Photoshop down to JPEG, JPEG. Just JPEG by itself. This is a beautiful web-ready document. It works on all websites, uploading. It's perfect for creating photos for social media and all that fun stuff. And notice that at the top, it's changed to psproject.jpg. Hit OK, hit Save, then OK again. That next screen doesn't matter. And you can actually quit out of Photoshop at this time. But I'm going to show you how to upload to Schoology. So you need to go back to your Schoology page. I'm going to see if I can show you what it looks like from a student's point of view, but I, it might not work. Actually, it's not going to work. <laughs> Oops. All right, let's fix this. So you're going to need to go to back to this page. There's going to be a submit button right where mine says submissions. It doesn't show you that on my screen because I'm the teacher. But let me go to a class where I'm not the teacher so I can show you. All right, so I'm going to load a class. 
This is my professional development class, something my principal can see. I'm going to go to assignment we had at the beginning of the year just to show you what an assignment page looks like. Here we go. This says resubmit for me because I've already submitted something. Um, what I need you to do, yours will say submit if it's the first time. So click on that. Then click on the little file icon right there. Then go to your documents where you've saved it. If it's not in your, and then your photo one folder. So documents and then photo one, if that's where you saved it. If that's not where you saved it, it's probably hiding in your downloads folder where everything kind of goes to die. So you could try to find it there. But let me go to documents, photo one, click on the PS practice image. And then when it's upload, you can go ahead and leave a comment if you want or just hit submit. I shouldn't hit submit on this because this is my principal will see this, but meh. why not? Okay, so this is what it looks like when it happens. And then I could tell her about that later or I could tell her about it right now. Do, 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 do. There we are. And if you do that over here at the mini Photoshop lesson, you are good to go. You don't need to do anything else. Make sure that you've edited with your curves and levels. You've typed some text. You saved it as a JPEG, in which case you will get full credit.